going on, guys? Another edition of the Connor and Mark Show. Once I'm Mark Rogers, I'm Connor Gabe. Today is a Wednesday, the 15th, uh, as we're recording this with the March Madness. Officially underway, some of the playing games um, have started last night. And then also uh, with NFL free agency still uh, you know, locked and loaded and, and, and a lot of big moves that have transpired the past couple of days that – uh, have a huge impact on the Eagles moving forward. And then later in the show, we'll briefly touch on the Sixers and how their stretch of hot, you know, wins have, is, is really piling up and how they can set themselves up for a pretty good playoff run. Mark, what's going on, man? How are you doing this week? Doing good. I'm, uh, I know we discussed before the show, a little tired. Um, yeah. <laughs> had, you know, everyone is right around this time. But yeah, had the opportunity to actually call some uh, games down at the, uh, down at Iceland for the CHF tournament, which is now the AAU tournament. And, Pretty cool. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Hockey House pod page, but I was able to to make my debut on there with a call. So that was pretty cool over a uh, Liberty Flames and, and South Carolina Gamecocks game. Pretty cool dynamic. Um, it was pool play. So uh, Alabama was behind the net and South Carolina just couldn't let up two goals. They let up that second goal. And uh, if you have an opportunity to check the video out, because it's pretty cool. They went nuts as they made the playoffs and and had an opportunity to pursue a, a championship in the tournament. So uh, pretty cool weekend here now, obviously. And, you know, back talking sports, back to what we love. And um looking forward to to diving into some Eagles news and obviously March Madness here. So yeah, good week overall. Yeah, it's it's starting to pick up. And, and I mean, you know, today's kind of the official day where guys can sign and a lot of these deals are official. But we heard in the, in the previous two days on Monday and Tuesday, uh, the tampering period, uh, there's a lot of deals that came out. Uh, notably, Javon Hargrave is going to San Francisco for, a, I believe, an $84 million deal. Uh, and then also they lost Marcus Epps, who will be going to the Raiders. Uh, TJ Edwards, the starting linebacker, will be going to Chicago Bears. So the three starters right off the bat uh, end up leaving. And then, but also, you know, some positive note, uh, you know, James Bradbury, an all-pro cornerback last year, comes back to the Eagles. There's a little bit of a surprise. I don't think a lot of people were expecting that for a three-year deal, which is just been now it's official as a recording. Boston Scott is going to be coming back. Um, Jason Kelsey, obviously a big, you know, big time to have him back at the center spot. He's, uh, you know, prolonging his retirement to come back for another season uh, for another run. Um, and also today, big news, Darius Slay ends up getting cut. There was some, uh, you know, contract negotiations and it seemed like the, they were at heads and, and it looked like that, you know, this relationship could end and it ended up, uh, you know, transpiring today with Darius Slay now becoming a free agent. Um, so now there's, you know, the bring back James Bradbury and Darius Slay uh, is leaving. And, you know, if you would have said that probably about three weeks ago, we would have been shocked if, you know, we never saw that scenario play, but, um, but, you know, a lot of moves have come. Uh, CJ Garner Johnson is still out there. And it looks like uh, reportedly uh, that they're making a big push to try and get him back, according to multiple sources. So he's another guy out there. He seems like the next domino to fall for Eagles free agents, uh, whether or not they can get him back. So I know there's a lot of moves. A lot of stuff has happened the last three days, uh, good and bad for the Eagles. But anything that stood out to you and what do you think about the direction heading uh, in, heading into the draft in April? Yeah, I mean, we we knew coming into the offseason there was going to be a lot of decisions to be made. And unfortunately, the the fact of the matter was that they were going to lose, you know, a lot of a lot of big players. But, um, you know, I'm really comfortable with the direction of this team. I think a big point that was made uh, last year was, you know, the depth of this team and kind of guys that are next in line to take that next step. We kind of discussed it a few weeks ago on the podcast as well, but. You know, from the cornerback perspective, obviously you got Reed Blankenship back there who made some big plays and, and they were kind of expecting him to play a bigger role this year. Um, you know, obviously from the running back position, bringing in Rashad Penny um, and and Boston Scott again to kind of replace that Miles Sanders uh, sort of thing. And then, you know, Jason Kelsey being one of the biggest one of them all, um, you know, with the the sick, um, you know, I ain't, you know, bleep and leaving. Um, so yeah, I think, I think, you know, at the end of the day, there was obviously, you know, can't keep everybody. You got to sign your, your quarterback. And that's kind of what all of this is revolving around. Uh, I like the Bradbury signing. I think that that was very key and yeah, I think the Eagles do have a pretty good shot of bringing back, you know, CJ Garner Johnson. And, and we've seen how he be pretty magical with the cap and, and kind of work it there. So, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give up on it. I mean, CJ might be possibly one of my favorite Eagles next to Jalen Hurts and, and Devontae. So, 
I would love for them to bring him back. He just has such a presence on the defensive end, obviously being the interception leader last year and, um, you know, making his his mark here in Philadelphia. So I like it overall. The last thing, just the slay uh, cut. I kind of saw this coming. Um, you know, unfortunately, didn't have a, a great season. He didn't have any forced fumbles, 40 solo tackles, which ranked 150th plus in the NFL. And then, um, you know, only three interceptions. So, you know, when, when you're getting that, paid when you're getting paid that sort of money um and and when decisions have to be made on the eagle side uh most definitely with money and they have some younger pieces they can maybe plug in there kind of makes sense so uh i think they're going to go through the draft I, I know there's some names like you know joey porter jr from penn state who could be a potential uh pick a replacement there and and some other things so i think they're they're just fine and um you know, I think they're definitely making the right moves, obviously, with the main domino to fall with, with Jalen Hurts' contract. Muted. It. <laughs> it's always good. It's, it's happened. It's going to happen at least once on the show. It's either you or me. <laughs> uh, it, it's, we, we were hoping to see, you know, um, you know that, that contract, you know, hopefully happen soon. Uh, but it seems like the parameters of the deal have already happened. If they're making moves like signing Bradbury and – try to get Garner Johnson back. I'm sure that a lot of the deal was probably already agreed upon. Um, but, you know, yeah, it's you're waiting on that and you're waiting on, um, you know, CJ Garner Johnson, whether or not he can come back. And then if that's the case, you get Garner Johnson back and then you have him and Reed Blank and ship at safety. And then it looks like, well, in the secondary, we're just looking for another corner. At 10, do you, like you said, do you go Joey Porter Jr., uh, Christian Gonzalez from Oregon, or, um, you know, Witherspoon from Illinois. Those are three guys that are mocked right around that spot at 10 in the first round. Or maybe they go defensive line with the guy like Jalen Carter, who's, his stock has been dropping day after day with his pro day to day. And it's, you know, it's, it, it's just every day it's, it keeps going down and down. And it, even at that point at 10, if he's available, did they take him? But it's another, it's a de- in, interior defensive lineman that could really fill that Hargrave spot. So, you know, it's, I know, I, I don't want to get too ahead of ourselves in the draft in April, but with a lot of these moves coming down uh, in free agency. But another interesting move I forgot to highlight was Rashad Penny, the running back uh, from Seattle, signed a, a one year deal. Uh, with Philadelphia, he was drafted in the first round, I believe, in 2018, 2017. Um, and, and yards per carry, he's been one of the best running backs in football. I mean, when he's been healthy, he's been a, a really good running back. I don't know if he's worth a first-round pick, but he's definitely worth a second-round pick uh, by Seattle. And he's definitely a, a good running back when he's on the field. He's You can make the case he's a, a number one, but like I said, the health is the main issue. But what do you think, make of that move? And do you think, the, do you think that with him, can he gain well balls as a scout? That's a good trio. Yeah, I really do like it, honestly. He's, you know, he's a bigger back than Sanders, obviously. He could be, you know, maybe not your three-down back, but he could definitely be a guy that you go to on third down. His ball security has been pretty good over the years, and I know with Miles Sanders, that's always kind of a question mark. He's he's very shifty. He's very, you know, agile, but sometimes his ball, you know, security comes into question. So I really do like the the one-year deal with Penny. It's kind of like a, a, a you know, a gap year, but – you're going to see that more with these running backs. Obviously, we've discussed the running back position is is not valued like it used to be. So um, I think it's going to give Gamewell an opportunity to, to kind of step up. And we saw him phased more into uh, the game plan last year at the end of the year. And I think they were kind of planning to hand him a bigger role this year. So I think it's going to play really well for the Eagles. I think it adds a little versatility to that running back room. And, um, you know, I'm excited to to see what Penny can bring. I mean, he had a hell of a finish last year, uh, at least for me in fantasy. So uh, I'm excited to to see what he can do uh, here with the Eagles this year for sure. All right, we'll still want to buy so before we head into the Sixers because there's some interesting, you know, things that can still transpire not only uh, around if the Eagles but around the NFL. Uh, but I do want to start with the Eagles and with that running back point. Buy or sell Eagles? Do you think they're going to take a running back in the draft on day one or day two? Uh, to add that running back room, or do you think that they're going to stay? Uh, well, I'll just say this. Would the Eagles take a running back in day one or day two of the NFL draft? Yeah, I'm going to sell that. I think that they're going to really look for a defensive player, and obviously a lot's going to factor in if they hang on to that 10th pick, and then they have the pick at the end of the round. Uh, they're a little thin in terms of picks. I believe we went over this, but the third, fourth, and fifth round they're not picking. So yeah. uh, that's the reason I'm going to sell. I think they're going to move back more and then maybe value a running back like in the fourth or fifth round um, and really go for, you know, a defensive lineman, as you mentioned, obviously a cornerback being a need. Um, yeah, yeah, I think they're going to they're kind of going to stick to those positions. So I'm going to sell on that. Okay. All right, for me, this is a big one. This team has been in the news a ton lately. 
And, I think I know who it is. <laughs> yep. And and uh, I hear a lot of people putting playoffs next to their name or or Super Bowl, excuse me, but they even made the playoffs. So wow. I'll pass this to you. Buy or sell that the Jets make the playoffs this year? It's a good question. I don't think they'll be better than the Bills. Um, I still think the Bills win the division. I'm trying to think who else win the division. Miami and uh, New England. Miami, New England. Um, God, I'm going to sell they that they're not going to make the playoffs. I, I think the Buffalo would win the division. I think Miami right now is better. I, I, I if, if Aaron Rodgers had an Aaron Rodgers type season last year, I'd probably say yes, but I just, I don't know. You're kind of seeing him go down mm-hmm. or something and ascend. And then I think with the AC, man, there's so many good quarterbacks. I think even that wild card, it's going to be tough with the Chargers with Herbert. And then you got, you know, Russell Wilson with Sean Payton. You know, I think they'll maybe have a bounce back. See, there's just so much talent in the AFC. Um, it's going to be tough. You know, I, I still think they have a shot. They'll be right there. It's going to go down on a wire with them. I mean, they were, they were on the wire with, the, you know, with Zach Wilson and, and Mike White. So, you know, maybe I'm being naive and thinking that they won't make the postseason. I think they actually have a shot. I just don't, I don't know. Cause I just don't know if Aaron's still that guy. So, um, and I don't know if Robert Sala at coach is, I don't know. I don't know a lot about their offensive coordinator. I don't know. How, like, I mean, well, it's Nathaniel Hackett, right? I think it's Hackett now. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they had success in Green Bay, so I mean, maybe not. Yikes. But after a while, it seems like it was forever ago with that dude. So yeah, oh yeah, gonna, he had a gonna, he had a good year last year too. So yeah, I, I'm gonna sell. I think that uh, I think they miss it. All right, like so it. third, uh, my second one, it's gonna be um, buy or sell. Lamar is gonna be a Raven by training camp. Wow, this is a really interesting one. I know that that jet domino hasn't fallen completely yet. It, it seems definitely towards the jets. I, I hate to say this as an Eagles fan, but I feel like the commanders are, are a potential landing spot uh, in the back they of just his signed head. today. So, I mean, that's, I mean, he's not a, 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 like a starter in his league. Mm-hmm. He's a very good backup, but um, yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy this one. I, I, I feel like Lamar is playing really hard to get, obviously. Uh, there's been some disconnect there with the Ravens, but I think at the end of the day, they're going to realize that when Lamar's in and he's playing and he's at the top, uh, the Ravens are, are winning most games. So I'm going to go uh, by, and I think he's going to get absolutely paid at the end of the day. I think he's going to get paid too, but yeah, it's I th- weird. But there's that a standoff, and I think eventually it's just going to be Ravens are going to pay him. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's probably not going to be the money he wants, but it's still going to be a pretty good payday. Yeah, so, I mean, I saw a stat the other day, like the winning percentage when he's on the field is like is like eighty. It's like eighty five percent of the games they win. So, yeah, I mean, you know, not a big numbers guy, but you know, when you're in the NFL and you're trying to to win a Super Bowl, I think you got to go by the numbers a little bit. So I think they'll come to their senses once they get up to training camp. They'll kind of get to that brink, and uh, you know, they'll pay the guy what whatever he wants. To kind of keep oh. him around and, and go from there. So, Mark, we got breaking news on the podcast. Oh boy, love breaking, breaking news. Breaking news from Adam Schefter: the oh. six-time Pro Bowl defensive tackle Fletcher Cox is returning to the Eagles on a one-year, ten million dollar deal. The Eagles get quote a hometown discount as he turned down more lucrative offers. Wow, I, I didn't want to break up our buy or sell segment, but it seems like a pretty big thing to break. I mean, usually oh, stuff's gonna happen when recording, so I want to throw that out there. Instant reaction to. Fletcher Cox being back. It seemed like it was a move that, you know, we, we thought this year it was going to be his final year as an Eagle, but, I mean, when you look at the defensive tackle room, it's very thin with, with our great leaving. Yeah, I think it had to be done. Um, you know, I'm probably going to – I'm probably – a lot of people aren't going to like this, but I'm not the the biggest uh, Cox fan. I just mm-hmm. – I don't know. Obviously, he's done a lot here. He's He's been a really productive Eagle over his career, but – um. You know, I think they could maybe get a little younger, but to your point with Hargrave kind of leaving, I think that's a guy, you know, you can maybe plug in and let some of these younger guys play. So I like it. One year, 10 mil, you know, not not great, but I'll leave it. How about you? I discount when I when I think discount, I would have said like maybe like six or seven, but I was thinking I, like five, maybe. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm not a huge Fletcher Cox fan either. Uh, he's he's a nice player, but he just doesn't do much for me anymore. He's not really a true impact player, and you know he's not he's never going to be obviously the guy who was in 2015, 2016. It's like one of the best defensive tackles in football. But um, yeah, I I just think that this may have been a move where like we have to bring it back because like what else do we have, you know? So, yeah. Because uh, listen, they got Jordan Davis, but he just didn't do much last year, and Mill Williams is a nice future player, but um. 
Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm not a huge Cox fan. I agree with you in that sense, but I do think like it was a move they kind of had to make, uh, and I think it kind of gives them some leeway uh, heading into the draft where it's like we have to get a defensive tackle, uh, you know, in the first round or, or the first pick. So, I mean, it sounds like they're going to go defense in the first round. It sounds like it's going to be defensive tackle or cornerback, but it kind of – I think it makes things a little bit easier moving forward at that spot, bringing him back for at least another year or so. I don't know. I wonder how much money he was getting offered on the market. If he's taking a discount yeah. of 10 Oh, dude, that was all from 15, 20, you know? But. I mean, dude, I, I, some of these, some of these things, again, like I love Bradbury, but like, you know, lucrative the offers from other where, I mean, he's a good player, but like, yeah. even, even Hargrave, dude, like, you know, Hargrave's a nice player. Oh, yeah. he gets Four years, of, 84 yeah. million. Whew. He gets, he gets a lot of sacks at defensive tackle, which, I th- which makes him really valuable. But like, um, yeah, I mean, that's a lot of money, dude. <laughs> that is, that's a hell of a lot of money, but you know, it's, yeah, I can't believe that. So that's kind of crazy that that just broke right as I was about to ask my fighter buy buy yourself question. It literally anything? has it literally is tied directly with this. So I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but buy or sell that the Eagles take a defensive tackle either with well, I don't think they're going to, but with that first pick, I believe a ten, or with their final pick in the first round. I'm gonna buy. I think that how he loves the yeah. defensive line and. And I know, and I don't think that them signing Fletcher Cox is like okay. Now they got their two starting guys and Cox and Davis. They definitely need another guy in there. And I think if I don't know, Jalen Carter is a little interesting. I, I don't I don't know what to make of him. You know, I'm sure the Eagles have their guys that do research into his character and off the field and and uh, you know how he's you know how he's progressing as a prospect. But um, I, th- I think they do. I, they value defensive line so much and get to the quarterback. And I think a lot of the you know they still have their edge guys in Reddick and. Uh, you know, Josh Sweat and Brandon Graham, guys, you know, had double-digit sacks last year. But, you know, part of the reason why they were, you know, so dominant and get to the quarterback is because they had so much pressure in the middle, too. So, you know, you, they're going to have to figure out ways to, you know, get some better players at defensive tackles so they can, you know, free up some rushing lanes for the outside guys. So I, I think that I'm going to buy it. I think Howie, um, you know, like he's, he's, you have to look at him historically and they value the defensive line and, um, I don't know what they're going to do with corner. I think they'll probably figure it out as it goes. I mean, that's what they did last year. Bradbury didn't get signed until what training camp, right? Right before it, August, yeah, late August, yeah, late August, yeah, not training camp. Okay, maybe yeah. no, no, oh no, that was CJ. Sorry, they traded for CJ late. I think Bradbury like, was a little earlier, June, maybe if I want to guess mm-hmm. somewhere around there, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, they value D line, and I think if Jalen Carter's there, and I think all the boxes check, I, I don't, I don't know, I can see how he passing them. You know, because he just values yeah. it so much, you know, and, and to get a guy that upside at 10, uh, that would be pretty great value. So, um, oh, I hell know, yeah. I've, I've, I've been in the opinion of that 30, they'll trade back, um, mm-hmm. I think to get some picks in the second and third round. But, uh, yeah, if I, if I had to buy or sell it and timing is very convenient with what just broke, but yeah, but that I'd was buy. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That was crazy. Um, Adam yeah, Center, they- uh, it was, uh, reading your mind, man. So. I know, I know. Me and Shafty kind of, I guess, think alike. So you know, great minds think alike. Did you see like, the uh, uh, Aaron Rodgers thing? Aaron Rodgers tweet with Shafty. Yeah, yeah, lose my number. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's the most Aaron Rodgers thing of all time. But yeah, I mean, before we move off the football topic, obviously, other big news, and and don't want to get too ahead in the draft. But the number one pick by the Bears being traded, they obviously got some yeah. draft capital back and a yeah. pretty good weapon that that I'm really excited to see. Uh, for the Bears and, and DJ Moore, what real quick before we hop off, what's your thought with that? And do you think they take Bryce Young? Do you think they take Stroud? Do you think there's an astronomical chance that they might take a defensive player? I mean, a lot of possibilities here. I think it's leaning towards a quarterback, though, obviously. Yeah, and I was looking at the odds. Last time I checked, I think Stroud is the favorite by like minus two fifty, minus three fifty, somewhere around there. Um, so my guess, yeah, I mean they're going to take a quarterback. You don't give that much assets and trade up all that just to not take a quarterback. So. Mm-hmm. uh yeah, I always look at the odds, and I remember like the day of the draft, like it was a Trayvon Walker last year. Like the odds of him, he's like minus like four hundred. So like Vegas knows, and they always know who's going to go number one. I think right now it looks like Strauss the favorite. So uh, I, I mean, I like the move um, from both perspective. I think the Bears needed a lot more assets to surround Justin Fields. And I think now with bringing in a guy like DJ Moore, a number one wide receiver, I think there's no more excuse for Fields now. I think he needs to go out and make that kind of jump, that Jalen Hurts jump that we saw last year with his arm. Yep, very and, similar uh, player. Yeah, and with Aaron Rodgers leading the NFC North, man, it's wide open. You know, yeah. Detroit Lions are, are you know have a shot. <laughs> are they are the Detroit Lions the favorite to win the NFC North? I mean, it's gonna be the first time in our lifetime. That's said. <laughs> so maybe since the eighties. 
Yeah, it's been a it's been a minute, and uh, you know, I, I, you know, golf had a good year, and but, I mean, listen, Fields was one of the more exciting quarterbacks to watch, but he didn't have the weapons. But now, um, you know, they just they did just lose Dave Montgomery. I wonder how they fill out that running back spot because uh, Montgomery actually just went to Detroit. So, um, you know, Jamal, do they swap and get Jamal Williams? Do they go out and get Miles Sanders that running back? I mean, Ooh. there's a lot of yeah, there's there's running backs on the market. They want to go out and get somebody, but oh, definitely. Uh, Yep. Yeah, they have the money to go out and get some guys and and uh you know they signed DJ Edwards at the linebacker. I'm sure they'll make some more moves, they'll have some more picks in the draft and you know get some guys on defense because they need guys and get their quarterback in Chicago. But yeah, it's gonna be interesting. I mean, you know, the Minnesota too. I mean, we've got a Minnesota, they're the one team that won it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well then it's, that it's and again, up. I I know once we bring up draft talk, Jesus, everything goes crazy we love that 24 7 dude i love it yeah we just get in the draft talk rabbit hole but then that you know raises the question if you know jalen carter's there do they do they take him at nine so Mm -hmm. a lot of questions there they have a lot of holes obviously to fill obviously the one of the big ones was the wide receiver position so getting a guy like dj Moore and that draft capital i think i think they really won that trade i'm always skeptical and again i know we're getting into the rabbit hole but Mm-hmm. I'm always skeptical about some of these big time quarterbacks, you know, coming the one that comes to mind most recently is like, you know, Joe Burrow from LSU and he gets all those great pieces around him. You got like Jamar Chase, you got Jefferson, obviously mm-hmm. Randy Moss's son was a really good player at, at LSU when he was there. Um, so it's always, it's always, you know, a little gray for me at least uh, when these quarterbacks come from these really big schools Personally, I hate to be a hater. I don't think Stroud is, is going to turn out to be that great in the NFL. I think mm-hmm. Bryce Young may have a better career, but, you know, there's a lot of questions around Bryce Young's uh, frame and, and such. So it's going to be interesting to see. The Panthers obviously don't have the best luck with, with drafting quarterbacks. So, um, you know, we'll we'll see. But that's that's obviously to come a little bit later. So we'll yeah. dive into to draft talk most definitely we won't forget about it absolutely so sixers uh I, I, they're in they're what they're are they in cleveland tonight they're yeah they're in cleveland 7 30 and uh they won their last five which is impressive as oh, hell wow. they won that they won that portland game i don't know if you had a chance to catch that i think they were down by like 20 yeah. at I half was watch, i was watching the end obviously with the big yeah. shot that beat it and he's got he's just been on fire man i mean right now the third in the east and it kind of looks like they're going to set it, settle in around that two or three spot, depending on how Boston favors in the last 15 games. And, um, yeah, man, they, they've been, you know, it's, it's been pretty funny. I think a lot of people are just skeptical at the team at this point. You know, they just want to see them get over the hump, even though the like, regular season wise, they haven't won the better, you know, one of the best seasons regular season wise, really post process. So, you know, it's, it's all a matter of getting to that second round, whether they face Milwaukee or Boston and, uh, you know, and, and if they can be able to get over that hump. But yeah, man, they're playing they're playing well. And Harden's playing well and Max is kind of getting to a groove. Uh I think Doc Rivers right now is doing a pretty good job with the the lineups and and the uh, you know, rolling out the guys. So, you know, it's I, I can't complain right now. Hopefully they keep this going. Hopefully they can lock in that one that the, you know, three or two, uh, and then go into the playoffs hot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think I think like you said to your point, I mean, a lot of a lot of fans, especially me, I'm sure you're on this side. Just really cautious with, you know, how excited we get about this team. We've, you know, haven't gotten past the second round, and, and that's really the topic of conversation. But I think this team is is just so different in terms of the depth and, and pieces that they really have. Obviously, you still got a guy like Maxi. Um, mm-hmm. Then you have players, you know, that fill in, such as, you know, a great player like P.J. Tucker. Gave us fits when he was on the Heat last year. Really mm-hmm. love the acquisition also of, of Jalen McDaniels. I think he's a pretty big piece. Um, a bigger piece than, than people may have thought. You have DeAndre Milton. Um, so you have, or DeAnthony Milton, excuse me. So you have guys like this that I think are going to make a difference in the playoffs. Another guy that's really been stepping up is, is B ball Paul Reed. Uh, yeah. B ball Paul. So, uh, you know, he's, he's looking pretty good. And that's always been a question mark. That was one thing I really didn't like in that Simmons trade when they got rid of a guy like Drummond. I thought that was such a big piece for the Sixers to have a guy that, you could throw in behind Embiid and chew up some minutes in the playoffs and then let Embiid come back. Obviously, the injury was was a really scary thing last year. So um, I'm not saying Paul Reed's quite at that level where you can throw him in and rely on him for, you know, a stretch in the game. But, you know, if he can come in, eat some minutes up, give Embiid five, seven minutes to rest and come back in, uh, I think it's going to make a really big difference. And I even think 
there's a possibility that the Sixers could even finish first. I mean, they're going to need a little uh, push here, and, and obviously they're going to need the Celtics to lose a little more and, you know, compete with the Bucs there. But I think I think it's for the taking for them. I mean, they're playing on a real – I don't think I've seen this many comebacks of a Sixers team, you know, for, for a really long time. The adjustments seem to be there as well. Well, April 2nd and April 4th, they got back-to-back. Uh, on the road in Milwaukee and, and at home against Boston, so two you know, huge yeah, games, huge games, and then I mean I they're know. they're only four out from the first spot, one behind Boston. So yeah, I mean I'm trying to look at the rest of the season. I mean, I mean Cleveland tonight's a, is a pretty big game. You know, it's Cleveland's a good team. They're in that fourth spot, like we said. Um, but then you got uh, and then you got what Golden State and on the road in Golden State and on the road in Phoenix, and then they come back home and then on the road again in Denver. It's gonna be tough, man. They got they got a three game stretch on the West Coast, and then they come back home and then take on the Dallas Mavericks. So that's you know it's some pretty good teams, you know, that are vying for some playoff spots, uh, and, and playoff positioning right around there. But you know, listen, I'm as long as they fit in that that third spot or that second spot, or even I mean, if they get the one, that'd be great. But you know, as long as they're there and get home field or you know, home field home court in the first round. <laughs> And then, uh, and then, I mean, they're gonna have to be, they're gonna have to beat Boston and Milwaukee on the road, probably anyway. But you know, that's it's you know, you're hoping that Embiid and Harden and the guys can you know figure out a way to do it. So, um, but they, you have to, they, they had a pretty rough start to start out the season. So for them to be at this point and the games that they've won over just you know this long stretch is pretty impressive. So, absolutely, absolutely. So. Just got a few minutes, you know, left here, and and obviously big news starting tomorrow. We got the. March Madness, Tony Connor, and, and always a good time, obviously. You got brackets and, you know, go for that perfect bracket for, you know, just the first three games. For me, it's normally the second game, and then it's busted, so. Usually, uh, for me, it's the first, so. <laughs> you beat me, and it's on there. Yeah, usually, usually always fun, but um, I guess I'll I guess I'll come hot right out of the gate. And and do you have a, a potential winner in mind for, you know, the March Madness tournament here? Well, my bracket – I mean, I'm, I'm going to preface this by saying I don't know a whole lot about college basketball. And, you know, um, so I I, I mean, I, I picked Houston. And, I, and Houston's had a pretty good yeah. year, obviously. So they're one of the better teams in college basketball. So I, there's not going to be a lot of reasoning behind my point in, in <laughs> Houston. But, I mean, it, it, looking at it from my point of view, it kind of seems like a crapshoot this year. There's not a lot of dominant teams. and um, But, you know, there's – you know, there's, looking at the bracket, I mean, that's I took Houston. So, I mean, that's – I like it. I don't. I don't know who you took, but um, yeah. I mean, I I I like Houston. Um, the the one thing that kind of scares me is they lost a, a pretty big player. I don't know when his return is going to be. I don't know exactly who it is. Um, mm-hmm. but but that's the one thing. Obviously, they they lost the American Athletic Championship to Memphis. But I mean, we even saw that with with now my pick. I mean, we saw Kansas. Mm-hmm. You know, lose the the Big Twelve, and uh, I'm going to go with the Longhorns this year. I'm gonna go horns up, baby. I think uh I think they're gonna come out with a vengeance. They got some really good players on that team. Um, and and I like seeing some new blood, you know, there in, in the final in the final four. So uh I'm gonna go with 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 uh Texas. And if I can remember off the top of my head in my bracket, I believe I have Alabama versus Providence. So that's gonna be my one sleeper to make it all the way to the final four. I just think you always get that one defensive team. Uh, that finds their way into the final four. And sometimes it's a big East team. So I'm going to go Alabama Providence and then Texas. And I believe I have Houston, but I got to look again. So we'll keep you updated on that. But yeah, I think, I think the Longhorns hook them this year and, and bring home the uh, March Madness title. How far do you think Penn State goes? I mean, they made a nice run in the Big Ten tour and he came up short against Purdue. It was a good team, but do you think they make a little bit of a run? I know they may, they may have to run into Texas, I think, in a round of 32, which would be difficult if they do make it past 64. Yeah, I mean, I think I I mean, their first one's going to be tough right off the gate. I mean, they have they have the SEC um, you know, Aggies in their way who who had a pretty good tournament in their respective divisions. So, I think, you know, if they can get past the Aggies 25 and 9, they're ranked as a 7th seed. I think that's going to really set them up, but it's all about these first games and super cliché, but you know, some some tough matchups here in the in the first round, just some other notable ones. You got Boise State, Northwestern. You got Auburn and Iowa, which is going to be a great one. Illinois and Arkansas. Um, you know, and then West Virginia and Maryland. So those are all tomorrow. And, um, you know, 
two really good basketball teams in, in all those matchups, but obviously, you know, one has to go home. So we'll see. But in regards to Penn State, I think they can make some noise here in the uh, March Madness tournament if they can just get past the Aggies there first. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, it should be exciting. I'm excited for that. I'm excited. I mean, we'll we'll probably do some more stuff with free agency and this whole month, and then once April hits, uh, well, and then once April hits, then we get the Masters, you know, right around the corner. Which, yeah. Uh, yeah. You see, Scheffler's dinner got uh put out today. I did. He, it looks pretty good, man. It does. <laughs> I did. It, it did, and I, you know, like I said, I was looking at that, and I like I liked uh who won in 2021 it was Tanaka, you know, uh, yeah, mid- 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 um, mid- Matsuyama, yeah, Strixon guy. Yeah, yeah, his menu is good too. So yeah, yeah. I, I always find that interesting when in the build up to in the Masters week. And uh, do you have an early favorite on uh, you know who's, who's coming in the Masters week? Is, is someone you're looking at? I mean, dude, it's always hard to repeat. Chef's just been unreal, man. I mean, I know we were texting back and forth about it last week, and stuff that guy can do with a golf ball is just out of this world. I mean, if I had a if I had a hundredth of what he could do, you know, maybe I'd be a, a decent golf player, but, um, yeah, chef's always a good one. Um, I always like Spieth. Spieth made a pretty good push, uh, last week at the, at, um, the players. And then the week before that, he had a, a pretty good one at Arnold Palmer. So he's good. And then my other one, really good player. My brother actually ended up meeting this guy at the airport, but, um, Colin Morikawa, I'd like to get out as well. So, and yeah, I like, I like more Cal too. He's 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 been playing really well. I like Max Homa, he's been Homa's good. Really, you know, uh, you know John I mean, Rock and I. There's just so many good guys on tour, and obviously you see it in the in the documentary full swing. But yeah. I mean, dude, week in and week out, you just got guys cut. You know, going at each other's throat, obviously. But yeah, mm-hmm. the pool is is really good for you know some of the talent they lost to the live golf, but. It's gonna be interesting, and and I'm pretty sure that the live golf guys can play yeah. in the Masters. Yep. So and the PGA Championship and the Championship, and I think the U.S. Open. So I think all, I think all, all the majors, they think play. all the majors. Yep. So it's gonna be interesting, man. But if I had to pick one, I'm gonna go with Chef, dude. It's yeah. that guy's just dialed right now. So we'll see. Yeah, no, I agree, man. Yeah, well, it's, it's definitely coming up, and uh, we'll we'll make sure to get out in front of it. Do some episodes in that, and also uh, with the NFL draft the end of the month in April. So a lot coming up, but yeah, we'll uh, we'll wrap it up here. Uh, like we said, that we'll we'll uh, try and put this out on social media, get some more videos out coming soon, and any more NFL free agency updates. We'll make sure we get it out. So alongside Mark Rogers, I'm Connor Gabe. We'll see you guys next week.